Welcome to my channel. I'm Athena. This is my channel, Stitching Artist Designs. This is Chill Out Cross Stitch and Harry Potter. And Halloween. Happy Halloween, y'all. Um, I've, I've worn all of my Halloween shirts and I haven't done laundry, so we have Mardi Gras. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> um, but happy Halloween Eve, everybody. It is, um, October 30th. It's like... Um, I was just talking to some friends and I was like, I love the Halloween aesthetic, the vibe, the decor, the moodiness, the just the actual day itself, dressing up, handing out candy, not so much. Um, my youngest likes to hand out candy, so I'm sure he'll do that. Um... I'll probably, I mean, I've, I will for sure watch Halloween, the original Michael Myers. Um, I watch that every Halloween. I have been watching scary movies kind of all month long. Um, and not scary, but Halloween movies, Hocus Pocus, um, Night, Nightmare Before Christmas, um, those kinds of things. But yeah. Um, and, and then it's November, y'all. And then it's three weeks till Thanksgiving, and then it's four weeks until Christmas, and then it's and then it's the New Year, and then <laughs> um, I still have not acquired a 25 planner. Um, I have my 24 planner um, that I got from um, I and I wonder if I said it wrong last week too because I accidentally told someone else the wrong thing too, and I. I, I said Insight Editions, and that's not it. It's Conquest Journals. So if I did give the wrong information, I'm, I apologize for that. But it's Conquest Journals. And um, um, I haven't looked. They, they usually do, like, one style of journal, like, for Harry Potter. They have all, all kinds of fandoms, though. So if you like fandom-type things, like, go check them out. But I will. I don't know what the 25 planner is. I haven't gone to look yet I I really think I'm gonna make that a focus goal for today to look on Amazon look on conquest journals like just maybe even just start like googling like 25 planner um, and see what I like and see what we're gonna do um, I always start off the year really really good like I mean we've got fully filled in pages, we've got filled in calendars, we've got stickers, we've got, oh, all the things, right? And then we get back here to October. Here's October. Um, nothing. Um, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, those are like preloaded stickers that I put in at the beginning of the year. Nothing. So, but even if I'm not using the daily, weekly, monthly kind of a thing, it is a house for like, there's my whip go board, um, which I haven't done all of that yet. Here's my whip list. It's always here and in the back. I have my list of finishes here. Um, so those are like good things. And then back in the beginning, um, I had a lot of goal pages that I filled in so if I'm ever like stuck in like what do I want to work on I can go back here and look at those goals that I made um plus I like fill it with all kinds of fun stickers look at all those stickers oh my gosh I love it and I have some like <clears throat> my 24 starts and 24 list is back here which I'm totally winning on that thing. Not. Um, and yeah, some other like gold type list things that I stick in the back pocket back here. More stickers. So it's just a good book to just have, even if I'm not writing in it every day. Um, it's a good place to be able to be like, oh, what were my goals? What, what whips do I, you know, want to work on? Like, it's just here it is. So, and I did just recently digitize my whip list. I put it all into a Google sheet and printed it and stuck it all up on 
um, my closet door where my whips are all housed in chronological order on a shelf in the closet. Um, there will be a um, whip parade coming. Usually that is like, um, I want to say somewhere in November, December when I get that up. Um, I'm probably going to be, honestly, I might film that soon and then like put it up beginning of December because I feel like that's when everybody starts uploading their whip parades. Um, like kind of year end whip parade type of, type of thing. I typically only do one a year because I feel like more than one a year is just overkill. I don't get enough progress on my whips to do two whip parades in a year. Um, so yeah. Um, but I have a feeling I want to film it sooner rather than later because in the filming of the whip parade, um, I see like how far each project is, which ones are closer to finishes so that I can then, um, start making goals, realistic goals for 2025. So I know like, oh, this one's really, really close to a finish. I need to highlight this one as a 25 finish. Um, this one is like, I haven't touched this one in years. I really need to touch this in 2025. Like those kinds of things. Um, I have don't think that I have ever. Um, no, that's a lie. I will take that back because there was, there was one whip that I UFO'd and I still have it and I, I still I still have like the fabric and everything I just knew I was never gonna finish it um but that was like this is the only one I've ever done um and it was like a build your own map type of a situation and it was just so there were too many options and my brain wanted to do them all and I couldn't and it was a lot of anxiety and it was a huge massive project and I was like I just I don't I don't this isn't bringing me joy <laughs> so anyways um all that to say I don't typically um UFO projects um I I have I have a completion a need for completion um so that's not typically a thing that I do I don't foresee me myself UFOing anything. I just really want to go through them and see where they all are progress wise. Um, <clears throat> and I still have a lot of whips that I wanted to start for 24 as my 24 and 24. I don't know that they're all going to get started, but, um, if they don't, they might wash over into starts in 25. I can guarantee I'm not doing 25 and 25 just because 24 and 24 didn't happen. <sighs> and for whatever reason, I jumped right into plans, like right out of the gate. Um, I don't know. It just naturally happened that way. I was planning on doing that at the end, but whatever. Um, along that same train of thought with the 25 plans is I will, I will still be doing whip go. I will, um, there's some thoughts around, um, like dice rolling to kind of choose what whip to work on and ty types of things. So I need to maybe solidify some thought process on that. I will come to you with solid plans once I <laughs> figure that out. Um, what else is there that I wanted to say? No, no, no buying of anything in 25 um, except for market and I, I, I don't know I'm allowing myself market I'm not even gonna give myself a budget but I have so much stash you guys so much stash um, I've been entering my charts every pattern that I own into Google Keep and I am over 600 and I have a large bag of things to enter. So I may get over 700 by the time I'm done. Patterns, 700 patterns to stitch. I'm already stash 
acquired beyond life expectancy. I'm already at my sable point. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's not even a no buy in 25. It's a no buy ever again. Like, get it under control, woman, and stitch what you have. Also, I'm going to need you all designers to stop it. Stop it. Because <laughs> I have enough. Uh, I don't want to see any more. I don't want you designing anything else. I am good. <laughs> Stop it. I know that's not going to happen, but... <laughs> um, okay. I just went off on that whole planning um, tangent there. But let's, let's actually look at some stitching. Because um, I have done some stitching since I, see since I saw y'all a couple weeks ago. I know it's been a couple weeks again. Apologies. Um, this is, I'm going to, I'm just going to pop a picture, picture in here. Um, the October Mood by Al Forest Embroidery. And here is where I'm at. I don't know if that's the same place. Like, here's the fabric as a whole, right? Light, light blue with, um, some like brown splotching. And that's where I'm at. Um, so I'm going along this border here, and then as I pick a color to stitch with in the border, if it's somewhere that I can get to easily, I'm like dropping it in. So that's why there's like sporadic stitching down here. Um, and now that I've, you know, I don't know when I'm going to pick this up again, but I think I was, I was starting my journey down this side of the border here. There's a little bit more to go here. And this is about halfway. This is probably where halfway will be lengthwise. So it's not even going to be as close as this. Not even, not even. It's going to come down to about here and probably about here. So that's about the size of it. <sighs> Absolutely. That was a new start. Um, one of the 24 starts. Let's see. And now I can add that to the back end of the whip, the whip uh, shelf. <laughs> um, okay, what do we got here? I mean, I feel like I, hopefully I didn't show all of these, but okay. Got this out, worked on this. No, definitely didn't show you guys this because last week I decided I was going to do Autumn Lane Week. Um, it turned into now Autumn Lane Two Weeks because... Um, I worked on this for a couple of days, lost my stitchy bug, got an actual stomach bug, and now here we are. So I'll, more on that at the end. Um, but um, I wanted to, I have three autumn lane whips going right now, and I wanted to just do a week of working on autumn lane whips. So here is where I'm at. I got a page finish, y'all. Um, this pattern is divided into four pages. And this, I mean, clearly, when I first started, I center started, right? So I was kind of like going back and forth between two pages here. And then I was like, stop it. Stitch this page. <laughs> so I did that. Um, and I have this page finish. Super excited to have a page finish. Um, clearly, you see there's going to be four more pages. Um, when you get down here, <laughs> it's like... I mean, this mood is solid too, but I mean, yeah, it's a lot of solid stitching. So that's where that's at. I do believe, I want to say I dyed this fabric. I don't know. I may not have. I don't know. But it's definitely an 18 count fabric. Okay. And I also worked on Solo Witches by um, Teresa Kogut. Okay, sorry about that. Um, Solo Witches Quaker by Teresa Kogut. Um, whip Go Call. I can't remember if this was a Whip Go Call for, I think it was this month. I'm pretty sure it was this month but absolutely love this. Um, that's mostly done in black and then you can see there's pops of green. Um, it is charted in Weeks Dye Works, um, Swamp Water and Guacamole. But I am stitching it on 
20 count. Um, it's a printed fabric. You can see that there's some like modeling there, but the back, there's none, right? So that, that modeling is just printed on the front. Um, I'm also doing this as a page type thing. So I thought, <laughs> I thought that this page took me clear up to this edge. No, there's another page that's like this much. So um, I came over and I started adding some of that page in over here where you could see with her dress that's kind of flowing back but I haven't started adding any of the green in you can see their floating legs their floating shoes <laughs> they don't have any legs um but yeah that's where I'm at and I'm stitching that in 310 um I don't have a green even picked out yet which is why really I haven't even stitched any of the green because there's no green in here so um okay and then the last thing I worked on was another Autumn Lane Whip, and this one is Baba Yaga, and um, absolutely love this one, absolutely love it. And this one was fully kitted up in a Halloween box, so it came with the linen. <laughs> but this linen is to die for, I mean, can you even with this linen? Um, I'm pretty, I'm... I'm 100% it's bestitch me, but it says catacombs bestitch me on the back. I feel like it was there was a change and this isn't catacombs, but I'm not 100%. Um, I still wanted to get a few more stitches in. Oh, I guess it really that really was the bottom. Um, doing a page, um, and I don't know how much higher. I mean, you could see how much higher up it goes because we're gonna go up to the top of this tree here. We've got the um, chimney, the peak of the house. So I've started going up the chimney here. Um, I want to say maybe probably around here might be the top, um, of that page. So, and yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, I want to say I love stitching on this, but I don't because I really, really, really struggle with linen. Like, Ada is my jam, will always be my jam. I'm a violent stitcher. I have said this numerous times. I'm a violent stitcher. Um, I don't slowly, methodically stitch and just peacefully zen out. I am like with my thread and I'm like yanking it and pulling it. And there's a lot of times where I'm like, my thread is so freaking tight on the fabric that when I go to try to get my needle back underneath it to end it, I can't. Like, there's, there's no room for my needle to go under. Um, it, I take my aggressions out, like, <laughs> um, and you can't do that with linen. <laughs> try to do that one time with linen and watch the whole weave just go <laughs> Um, I don't, I like the uniformity of Ada. I like, and that's why I can be okay with even weave. Um, but linen just, there's some stitches are bigger. Some stitches are smaller. I hate that. Um, I have to, I literally every single stitch, if I'm not following like a row underneath, if I'm like going up and on my own little path like when I'm doing these trees I have to be like one two over here one two over here over two I can't I can't. my brain just won't and I know it's probably something that you would like eventually get used to and you would find your pocket and all the things but I I mean I, re I revert and I go right back to working on Ada again and so I don't work on linen enough to get used to counting over two. It just is what it is. Um, but yeah, that is that one. And the last, um, the last, oh, it's buried. The other one I still have to work on for Autumn Lane is the collectors. So I might um, finish up 
what I wanted to get done here on Baba Yaga tonight and then tomorrow on Halloween work on the collectors. Um, okay. That's all the stitching. Where's my list? I actually made a list of things to talk to y'all about, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. Look at me actually doing things. Okay, let's talk about... Yeah, let's do promotions right off the bat. So, um, it's November. <laughs> it's November in like two days. Um, so we have the November floss of the month. That's the only, that's the only happy thing I'm going to be happy about in November. Um, also can, I'm sorry, but 86 degrees yesterday. What? What? I don't approve. It's still in the, it's in the seventies today. So, okay. And then tomorrow, high of 58. More on those temperature shifts and what it's doing to me later. Okay. Whole tangents. I'm on a squirrel, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Stop saying okay. <laughs> November brings floss of the month. So the floss of the month, um, we have a, I'm pretty sure this is a returning colorway one that I've shown before, but it's never been available for sale. This is the first time available for sale. Um, always available for sale through Thread the Needle Stitchery. Um, Stacy um, Clark runs that shop, her and her family. Um, thank you so much, Stacy, for doing this, partnering with me, getting these, packaging up, sending them out to all the people who want them. Um, if you would like to subscribe and get an invoice automatically every single month, go to her website. You can subscribe for the Athena's Floss of the Month. Um, there's like a Google form to fill out. And then <clears throat> otherwise, they are listed on her website. You can buy them individually. Um, if you subscribe, you automatically get the 10% off for my code of goddess10. If you buy them individually, um, put my code in goddess10 to get 10% off. Not just your third packs, but everything on the website. Go shopping. It is holiday season coming up, y'all. Go shopping. Um, she has some amazing things in, added to the website lately that's just, like, not just stitching stuff, but, like, finishing stuff. Stitching decor-related stuff. There's, like, an old-timey like wrought iron um, <clears throat> sewing machine thing that holds a, <clears throat> sorry, like a twine spool or something. I want that. Um, it's on my, it's on my wish list. I will eventually grab it. But yeah, um, Thread the Needle Stitchery, link down below, always. Got us 10, 10% off your order. And for the month of November, Floss of the Month is inspired by Luna Lovegood. And here are the colors. Um, absolutely love them, love them so much. And we have Classic Colorworks Boysenberry Jam, Classic Colorworks Deep Fennel, The Gentle Art Berry Cobbler, The Gentle Art Gra Grape Fizz, and The Gentle Art Island Blue. Um, if you're new here, I am comprising them of Classic Colorworks and Gentle Arts, not including weeks in that, only because I already have a weeks collection. Um, I was in a Floss of the Month for weeks and I pretty much have that collection finished and was going to move on to either classic or gentle art and decided I'm going to just do it myself and I'm going to grab colors that speak to different Harry Potter places and locations and I mean um, characters. Yeah. So there's Luna Lovegood for the floss of the month for November. Um, yeah. If you're subscribed, you'll get an invoice probably tomorrow, um, or tonight or tomorrow, um, and they'll be up on the website available by tomorrow. So go grab your floss of the month. Um, and while we're still doing promotions, let's talk about shirts for November. Y'all, hmm. Um, one of these shirts has to be remade because I, y'all always be like, oh, I trust you. Mm, you shouldn't maybe always trust me. <laughs> Because even I don't pick the, the right color scheme every time. Um, I had a vision and it didn't play out. But, oh, did I bring? I didn't. I'm going to have to pop a picture in of the other one. Um, so we're going to have four shirts for the month of November. And they are all Christmas shirts. I know, sacrilege. I'm talking about Christmas on Halloween Eve. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Halloween gods. Um, but, um... 
my dark humor just said, should I actually say, I'm sorry, Halloween gods? <laughs> Down is it? Okay. <laughs> We're gonna get through this, y'all. Christmas shirts available for the month of November. Um, the entire month. They will be available all the way through November 30th. Sales will close on November 30th. That will have given me plenty of time. Even once sales close on November 30th to get orders completed, shipped out to you before Christmas. Um, the earlier you order, the earlier you get your shirt. That's all I can say. Um, and yeah, we're going to have four Christmas designs, three brand new ones, one returning one from last year. Um, I hope you guys love. So without further ado, here we go. <laughs> brand new design number one. We have Have Yourself a Merry Little Stitchmas, and it's in the shape of a tree. Um, I have this done on a natural um, colored shirt, a Bella canvas, natural colored shirt, soft style, and I'm using an olive green. So I have a more muted tone going on here with this. Um, I think this would look really super cute on a cream colored hoodie or sweatshirt as well um yeah of course you can always jazz it up even more and go with like a red shirt bright green vinyl flip it the other way around you could do a black with red or green whatever you want um yeah but there you go have yourself a merry little stitch miss that's number one toss you over there number two and I've done this one on a, I think this was grass green, um, grass green Bella canvas shirt, soft style. Ooh, and we're going to get all the glare because I did it in Twinkle. Um, I'll upload a video, but oh, we're getting it. We're getting it. There's, it's Twinkle. You can see the Twinkle and the sparkle of it a lot better in person than on camera. Um, Anyways, I'll hold still so you guys can try to see it. North Pole Stitching Company, um, premium handmade gifts established 1802. I made up a number. I made up an old number. Um, 1802 means absolutely nothing, I don't think. I just made up a number. Um, yeah. There it is. We've got a couple of presents on there. We've got needles across the bottom. Um, but basically, this is a pretty slim down um simple kind of design but yeah north pole stitching co oh there we go the sun is like in and out so it's messing with my coloring but love that one this one <laughs> um i'm gonna upload a picture after i show you this shirt too because you're not gonna see this shirt it my vision did not play out i wanted to do a white sparkle on a twinkle and, um, I mean, on a pink, so white and pink, silver and pink is kind of what I was going for. You can't see it. Well, you can see it better on camera because it's reflecting a lot, but you, it's just, it's too subtle of a design. You cannot, you cannot see it. And I'm sad about it, but I am going to, um, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do, I'm going to put a blue over the top of it and... So you can actually, I think I'm going to go with a blue vinyl so you can actually see it. <laughs> but here's what it looks like. Um, says, stitching in a winter wonderland. And we've got a hoop and we've got a snowman with a needle and thread. And um, the hoop kind of has a stand here. So it kind of almost looks like it's more of a snow globe. Um, but it is a hoop too because it's got the, we've got the little hoop off to the side. Gosh. Yeah. Um, yep. There it is. My vision did not play out. I mean, maybe I'll do a dark gray. No, I think a blue, I think a light baby blue would look good too on this pink. Cause clearly my sparkle, they don't make a white twinkle, which I'm kind of irritated about. And the white, this is white sparkle, and white sparkle is more silver than it is white because it has all that sparkle in it. You can see it really good right there. Um, and it's just, I, this shirt wasn't dark pink enough. 
I think if it was a darker pink, maybe that lighter would have showed up better. I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. And last but not least is the returning design from last year is Tis the Season. Um, I did Tis the Season for Halloween this year as a new design. And so I'm bringing back the Tis the Season Christmas from last year. So if you would like the pair, um, you can have them both. You can have a Tis the Season Halloween and Tis the Season Christmas. So yes, those will be available all a month of November. And um, also, hopefully if you're, if you're watching this on Halloween Eve or hopefully I get it up on Halloween Eve, sometimes it takes a long, long time for me to upload the thing. Anyways and or Halloween, you can still go get the October shirts that I will post here. Um, you can still go get those October shirts through the end of Halloween, um, midnight, October 31st. And um, yeah, the, no um, the Christmas shirts will be up November 1st sometime. Check. I mean, it's not like it's a it's gonna they're sell out kind of a thing. They'll be they'll be there all month long, but yeah. If if you don't see them on November first, check back November second. They'll definitely be there. Um, but yeah, I hope to have them uploaded and ready to go November first. Um, and then for the month of December, we're not going to have December shirts. Um, I'm only going to have the um, winter stitching vibes on D December twenty first and it'll be on sale for 24 hours only. And that's the only thing that's gonna be on sale in the month of no and the month of December. I'm gonna have the rest of the month to kind of close out the year, um, spend time with family, all those things, and um, just have a relaxing December, and then we will start fresh again in January. So excited. <laughs> excited for what I have planned for, Jan for 25. Um, okay. That was promotions. We're done with that. Um, let's talk about, um, let's, I'm going to show you this book nook stuff that I've been working on real quick. Um, and then let's do, we'll go into like trivia. Um, okay. I don't have a picture of what this is going to look like, but it is called a magic shop. Um, it is basically a one. It's basically Ollivanders, but you can't say Ollivanders cause copyright. So, um, but I have been working a lot on, um, getting individual shelves completed and built. You can see, hopefully you can see like all of the little, little things. Every little aspect of this is like built individually. Like I glued the little knobs on, I put the little things on. It's like, it's, it's a lot. I glued all the things together. Um, so there's that shelf. Here's another shelf. Um, I, I mean, the wheels are individual beads that I had to glue on and you could see like my super glue is leaving residue, which I may go over like with a brush and try to like get some of that residue gone. I'm building each one of these wands individually. There you can see them better. Um, with wire and beads. It's a lot, y'all. It's a lot. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. <laughs> Keep telling myself that. Um, this is a fun little poster tray, poster thing that's going to go up on a wall. Um, but there's lots of little different things involved there. It was fun. Um, got this little shelf. I was so I was so excited with those glasses. I bent those glasses out of a wire. Um, this is gonna have that has an actual light in it. You can see I've got the wires ready for that. Um, we've got scrolls. We've got another wand. All kinds of things there. Um, here's another shelf. So many different, so many different little tiny, teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny. I mean y'all next to my finger like we're talking teeny tiny 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 um trying to work with all these things is I'm like this is a piece of wood that I had to like cut these strips I had to cut them out 
I had to glue them on there. It's, oh, it's a lot. It's a lot. I don't think, until you do one, I don't think you can really appreciate how much time and energy goes into building one of these. Um, yeah, there's little templates for me to cut out all of those pieces, glue them together. That's about it. I mean, there's a lot of little tiny, tiny pieces left, but I'm going to be starting work on the actual building next. There's Hedwig carrying a little letter. Um, I've already started making some of the walls. So <clears throat> the actual building is coming next and um, then I can start putting all these shelves and things into, uh, um, into the building. So um, I have been spending, dedicating quite a bit of time on that this last two weeks. Um, I have learned that I can't, because I had started this months ago and then put it away for months and got it back out again and was completely lost. Had to like, it was a whole fresh learning curve to get back into it. So I need to like, I can put it down for days, but not weeks, not months, because then you have to like relearn it all over again. Um, so yeah. Um, I'm excited to have that done. Excited. But it is a labor of love. It is a labor of love for sure. Stay there. Do not move. Um, if ever you are going to be starting a book nook or have interest in, in any of that, um, and you are like wondering like tips and tricks and anything like that, let me know. Reach out to me. I can definitely like tell you what glues I've used and what's worked for me versus what hasn't worked for me because there's the, there's, a, there's quite a bit of frustration in learning the glues and the different how to fold things and how to, I don't It's a lot. Okay. Um, <clears throat> trivia. So last week we talked about um, we have I have a horror trivia box and one question was what legendary funny man duo encounter all kinds of classic monsters in their Meet the Monsters movie? And the answer, Abbott and Costello. And what was Candyman's weapon of choice? A hook for a hand. Um, and that was definitely a Candyman didn't get like as big as your Freddy and your Michael and your Jason, right? But he was definitely in that same era. Um, and definitely has a cult following, you know, cult classic following. Um, so a lot of you got the Abbott and Costello. I didn't even know Abbott and Costello had, no, not even, not even a little bit. Um, <clears throat> M80 Watson. I'm old enough to remember, um, watching Abbott and Costello movies. So funny. And then Candyman. Um, not, not a Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Hope you feel better after your infusion. Um, never used a planner. I have never had that much stitching to write about. 2025 will change that. Are you planning a lot of new whips? What's happening? What's going on? What's changing in 2025? Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for... I don't know. Um, and then we've got Wolf Down the Rabbit Hole. Jen um, came from Liz's channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. 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 <laughs> Um, we try to have fun here. Uh, no idea on the questions, but I do want to say maybe Doc and Marty pressed the wrong button in the DeLorean. No, no, no. But that would be hilarious. Um, they do have like a whole Back to the Future section in Universal and it is kind of closer. It's on the Universal side, closer to like where the Monster Cafe and stuff was. So that would be cool. Have a little crossover there. Um, Devi, um, I just got my new planner, goes through June of 27. I don't think I could commit to a planner for that long. I want to change up my planner every year. I need new. I need exciting. I was doing a planner a while back that was monthly, and that was fun, but it was expensive. Um, Quilt Junkie, um, hey there, good to see you. In the market for a 25 planner, too. Got him not along. Yeah. I will definitely be coming to you guys next episode with, for sure, my 
if not planner in hand, what I have purchased and is on his way. Um, Lynn X Stitches Creates. I know the comedy duo is Abbott Costello, but I don't know Candyman. Did he use hot sugar? That would be funny. Um, no. Definitely Candyman is in the slasher, like, slasher gory vein. Um, Liz. Hello, Liz. Um, Stitched by Liz. If you haven't watched, go watch. Um, my brain doesn't even remember what the not for safe YouTube response was. That's, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've been doing 13 stitches of Halloween. Not that I have been posting much. Uh, for this week, Candyman's weapon of choice was dental tools. <laughs> that would be funny. No idea. I've never seen it. Um, 13 stitches of Halloween. Hashtag one, three stitches of Halloween. Um, for anybody who is... <laughs> an OG fan of the 13 stitches of Halloween. Thank you so much. Um, and has been posting and has been stitching and has been doing Halloween stitching, um, and been tagging me and using the hashtag. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I have been seeing, I've been trying to comment on all the things. Um, I appreciate it. I completely failed in even like promoting it at all in the month of September. I need to remember next September to start promoting 13 stitches of Halloween getting it ready for October. So, um, I failed, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for everybody who has been doing it. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, Sue Gonzalez, um, great progress on your stitching. I've been focusing on practical magic for October, putting in at least a hundred stitches a day. Did miss one day exhausted after work. I mean, I know you work amazing hours. So like, or disgusting hours. I don't know. I feel like disgusting hours whatever. Um, a hundred stitches a day, I think is absolutely amazing. Cause I guarantee you, I do not do that myself. So legendary duo is Abbott and Costello. Candyman's weapon of choice was a hand as a hook. <sighs> hundred points for Sue. Um, Shannon Notest Notestine, Shannon N. Um, glad to see your newest episode. Really enjoyed watching you. I hope your infusion goes well. Makes you feel better. Mm. Um, I would absolutely love to participate in your 25 goal as I do have plenty of stash to use and I think my theme for 25 will be to use what I enjoy, use and enjoy the things I've already purchased and acquired. Yes. You purchased them for a reason. You wanted, you wanted to do them. You wanted to, they brought you joy enough to purchase the things. Now let's, now let's put it into action. Um, yeah. So. Um, let's do, uh, let's see. Okay. Hang on. I need to cross. I need a, I need a list. And let's check the list we have talked about. Um, oh darn. I forgot to buy it. That's going to have to be for next week. I'm going to circle it for next episode. Um, 25. I talked about book neck. We talked about shirts, floss of the month, stitching, trivia. Yep. All we've got left is, um, my, haul type stuff that I want to show off and then we're going to talk about health updates. Um, Miniso, um, M-I-N-I-S-O, Miniso, Miniso, however you would like to say it. Let me show you, um, Miniso, um, not everywhere, but in a lot of major cities there's they're opening more and more here in the United States it is definitely a I don't, I don't know if it's Japanese or Korean type store um but um I was trying to like but yep it came off any so um yes they have a lot of like Hello Kitty and those kinds of things but they also have I was introduced to this store by Linux to just creates because they do have a lot of Snoopy stuff and she's a Snoopy fanatic. Um, so when we were in Orlando together, we went to Emaniso and she found some Snoopy stuff. They had like one Harry Potter thing and it was those, that was those like cozy, like wrist bracelet things I've showed you before. Um, and I got some of those, but they have introduced a whole Harry Potter line. Um, there are a couple of just generic, HP type things. Okay. But for the most part, like 90% of what they have in this release, in this epic 
release of Harry Potter stuff is all house specific. So I went Slytherin hog wild. Yes, I did. Um, I got a blanket. I got a hooded blanket. I haven't opened it yet. It's really cool wrapped up in this little um, thing here, but you can see um, it's a hooded blanket um, because, you know, I'm so cold all the time. I just needed to get a hooded blanket. FYI, I am hot, 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 hot all the time. Did I need a blanket? Hell no. Did I want it? Yes, I did. So I got a blanket. Um, I got a Slytherin book. Do I have one that's almost exactly like this from Universal? Yep. Do I need another one? Nope. Do I get one anyways? Sure did. Lined. Just, I love, I love this. Um, Harry Potter. It does have Miniso stamped into it as well. Um, I got a Slytherin wallet. My current wallet is dying, so I mean, it's a wallet. It's got a little zip. And they had purses, they had bags, they had all kinds of things. Um, they had um, a they had some blind boxes. Um, I'm trying to find the card that goes with this. It's this one. Okay, so they had some blind boxes and this is really what sent me to the store because Lynn, thanks Lynn, um, sent me a video for a guy that was went to Miniso, found these, was opening these, and they looked absolutely adorable and cute and amazing and I wanted it. So she only had four left when I showed up over there. Um, it's clear out by my infusion place, so it's kind of far away from me. In Kansas City, Kansas. I'm in Missouri side, so it's kind of far. But um, yeah, so I was able to um, get out there, get some of these blind boxes. I got four of them. I got four different ones. I'm happy about that. There are seven, I think, in total. But here is one that I got. So it comes with this clear little stand, so it, you can like set it on to sit on your shelf. And then it's got a little bow. I mean, I guess if you wanted to hang it, you could do you could do a hanging type thing too. I think I'm going to like glue this some kind of way right here so that it's like cute right here. Um, this is a removable magnet and this is magnetized as well so it sticks there. Um, this looks like a letter. You've got a little decor thing here. You've got um, the little decor thing here. And then this is like a moving glitter type situation and you're not going to be able to see it at all but stamped kind of into the plastic is a stack of books and see I can't even see it oh some scales I almost kind of wonder if I don't take some black like a black marker and maybe rub over it or something oh look oh look you could see it right there boom um yeah so I got that one and we got the um gold one and here's the gold one so we've got the broom we've got the lightning got a sweater here we've got the gold background and let's see if we can do that trick again with the hp and the owl and we've got a gryffindor crest and then we have um a martensia one and you can see advanced potions and a cauldron and we've got a polyjuice potion label with the amartentia some potions down here and then last but not least oh they all came with these cards too and they like the cards even say miniso on them um and last but not least is the blue one with the sorting hat and we have a wand, scarf, sorting hat, the car, and I can't even, I can't even tell what that says. What is that? Oh, it's a trunk. It's a trunk. Um, but yeah, they're super cute. Uh, I do think they were like 15 each, somewhere in there. Um, yep, that was all of that. I think that was all, everything from Miniso. Oh no, um, I got, a, I got a couple free gifts because I bought so much stuff, so his little keychain I got two of them and she's like oh one for you and one for a friend I was like or, or they're both for me <laughs> what um okay I showed you all this grabby box right and I 
got a recommendation from Bobby on what kind of book to get. If you would like to know what kind of book to get, let me know for mixed media. Um, cause I, I don't, I don't remember. And I already took the things all off, but it has like, a bendy I mean it'll and it has this so you, you can expand this thing out right and then it also has a um, pocket here you could put things in um, this is my first attempt nobody laugh at me this is my first attempt at anything um, a dual page kind of layout type situation I did do the little window thing everything that you see here is from that grabby box everything um, I definitely learn what to do and what not to do. Um, maybe putting the stencils down first. Um, if I'm going to stamp the stencils, stamp those down first. Um, yeah, different things. Um, I think I need more. I need to use more of the things. There's a lot of openness here where I feel like a lot of the examples I've seen have been just like layered on top of layered and it's just more. Um, and there's a lot of openness there. Um, the last thing I want to show you guys. <sighs> this has nothing to do with anything at all. And this was just simply pure joy. Um, and I haven't really like flipped through and tried to really, I mean, I've done some flip through, but I haven't really found anything that I want to make exactly. But I think I'm going to have the boys like pick some things to make and we can go from there. I got Snoop Dogg's cookbook, y'all. I didn't even know he had one. <laughs> when I tell you... I found this out and this this came out a while ago like I don't it's it's a because he already has a second one out because um, when I went to look for this one there was there's two um, let's see I don't, yeah no there's not any sort of if it is it's maybe it's in the back oh yeah there it is 2018 so yeah from crook to cook <laughs> um, Snoop Dogg's own book um it's got an opening forward by martha but no this is him this isn't martha this is him um we've got recipes that are just like um ain't no jive um herb turkey and gravy um we've got um the soft touch tacos and like look like um we've got um yeah i don't know there was like thickness with the gravy some, something <laughs> spaghetti a la hood <laughs> spaghetti de la hood <sighs> oh, this is this is just pure entertainment this that's all that is um he's even got a whole section like a whole thing on like munchies <laughs> i could look at that forever and just keep laughing and enjoy life um so the last thing I want to talk about because um, the kid's going to be home like any minute and I've got to cut this short or not short. We're already in an hour, but I got to cut this off. Um, health updates. The October slide. This is something that I'm just learning about this year. Um, I have started this year following a lot more chronic illness pages on Instagram. And through that, I have learned of something called the October slide. And... Um, I feel like last October I was not feeling very, I mean, I wasn't feeling very up. I was very low. Um, I remember not stitching a whole bunch and being really upset because October is my favorite month. And I mean, I have all the Halloween stitching and I just couldn't enjoy the month and I didn't know what was wrong and all the things. Um, <clears throat> if you have a chronic illness and um, you are experiencing an elevation and symptoms, a worsening in how you're feeling, um, during this month and into, even into November, um, it, there's, it's definitely been noted and has been documented, um, and it's been coined the October slide. It's the change of the seasons. It probably happens with all of the change of the seasons, but I, I have been noticing it a lot more just because we've been having this drastic, like we were 86 yesterday, we're going to be in the fifties tomorrow. Like we're going to be lows, like, like our low was in the, in the sixties, lows in the twenties, thirties, like in two days, like this roller coaster of temperature shifts, um, barometric shifts, um, just, I'm just, 
it's playing havoc. It's wreaking havoc on me. Um, I know my infusion was, I think we're like at two weeks now post infusion. I'm just barely maybe starting to feel a little bit better. The other big impact thing was last Friday, um, into Saturday, I had a 24 hour stomach flu virus type something or other. I don't know. It was horrible. Um, and I know any sort of illness at all on top of a chronic illness can just, it's, it's, it's more, it's more. Um, so I was like in bed for three days on top of like, I had the stomach flu, but then like a couple of days to even recover from that. Um, my energy was just gone. I was completely zapped, wiped out all the things. Um, but on top of all of that, on top of the October side, on top of the energy, the fatigue, like just lows, right? And the stomach virus, I, and maybe because of all of that, I've been having a um, elevated depression type symptoms. Um, even before the stomach flu, I'm still noticing it now. I'm just having days of just very low dopamine, just not wanting to do anything at all, just not wanting to get out of bed, nothing is bringing me joy, um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just really, really struggling. And there's, there's time to give yourself grace and allow yourself time to um, feel low and maybe your body just is telling you that you need to slow it down and lay in bed for a couple of days. And that's fine. If that's what needs to happen, that's what needs to happen. But then there's also a time for tough love and get your butt out of the bed and do the things that are going to make you feel better. Um, you know the things. You know what the steps are. And you're inside your head probably yelling at yourself to do the things um, if you're in that place. So just know that once you decide, okay, we're done, we're done. It's tough love time. We need to get out the bed. We need to get outside and we need to get some sunshine. We need to drink some water. Um, you're a plant with emotions, sun, water, food. We've got to do the things. Um, vitamins, oh, vitamins. I can't stress it enough. Vitamin D, the, another huge part of the, of the October slide is you're heading into the darker months. You're not getting as much daylight hours. You're not getting as much outside time. The temperatures are colder. Vitamin D. Up it, up it, up it. Um, I'm up to like, I think 6,000 units a day, a day of vitamin D. So, I mean, do what, do what you need to do. Do, do your, do your research, talk to your medical health, your medical providers, all the things, but like vitamins, sunshine, food, water, um, and tough love yourself out of that bed. Even if it's to just go sit outside for a half an hour and then tomorrow you sit outside for an hour or or you go sit outside for a half an hour and then you throw in like a load of dishes or a load of laundry or even just to get out of your bed and clean the bedding change the bedding that's what's that's something i i need a reset um so yeah um but that's it that's that's yeah um health hasn't been great but i'm masking like a champ and we're getting the things done. I'm tough loving. Um, I had a slide yesterday and probably a little bit of a slide today, but we're going to keep going every day, every day, every day we're going. So that's all I've got. Um, happy Halloween, everybody kids coming. I got to get him to robotics. So, um, I see the bus <laughs> It's coming. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a very magical stitchy week. And for now, mischief managed.